Today I'm at beautiful Tolona Ridge RV Resort up in Ella J, Georgia, and I'm gonna give you a tour and review. Now, if you're one of my subscribers, you know I typically do more informational content reviews on RV related stuff, but I figured I'm staying here and it's just such a beautiful place that I can show you around. And so I went out this morning and got some really good footage, kind of a tour of the uh, entire resort. So I'm gonna put that up and you can watch that as I show you around. But this place is absolutely gorgeous and it's really all about the views, the mountain views. I mean, that's why you come here. And by views, I don't just mean in one direction. You know, sometimes you go to an RV resort, maybe at the beach and you've just got the ocean on one side. But I mean, here you've got 360 degrees of views all the way around, just absolutely gorgeous. And so you're gonna see those throughout the tour. But let's start with the highlights. So Tolona Ridge RV Resort is located in Ella J, Georgia. That's North Georgia. It's about an hour and 15 minutes north of Atlanta or south of Chattanooga. So it's kind of in between the two cities, at least driving distance. And you know, it's a beautiful resort. I'm gonna talk about the amenities here in just a minute, but really, like I said earlier, it's all about the mountain views. It's kind of situated up on a plateau about 1500 feet above sea level. The highest portion in Eagle Crest, I think it's 1,550 feet above sea level. And then at the lower level in Hawk Valley, it is 1,490 feet above sea level. They've got about 140 RV sites. And you know, like any RV resort, some sites offer a better view than others, or I should say different views. I mean, some of us, we like views out the back of our RV. Some like it on the campsite. And so hopefully throughout this tour, you'll kind of get an idea as I go throughout the different areas, you know, where you would like to, to pick a site when you come here. Now on this trip, we're staying actually in the middle section here in the Falcon Ridge. And there's kind of two levels to that Falcon Ridge section. We're in the lower level. They have about a half dozen sites that are more parallel to the road. And you kind of overlook and see this beautiful view you can see in the background. And of course, you've got this nice deck out here that gives you another eight feet or so looking over the, the kind of the ridge here. And so really just breathtaking views as you look out here and see all the mountains in the background. I believe at every campsite, they have a picnic bench and a fire pit. Now it's a relatively new resort. I think they've officially been open for a little over a, a year now. And so obviously you'll look around, you'll see the vegetation, it's, it's pretty young. So not a lot of privacy between the sites. But if you look closely, you'll see that they have planted a lot of vegetation. In fact, I think it looks like every site has at least one larger specimen tree. And so, I mean, obviously over the years, those are gonna to grow up. In fact, you know, first time we came here was about a year ago. And even in that last year, I've noticed all the vegetation has gotten quite a bit bigger since then. But I gotta say the sites up here along the Falcon Ridge, the half dozen or so sites, they actually have a lot of privacy because you're kind of in a single file line as RVs you know, tip to the, the rear of your neighbor. And so you have all this space out here that's very private, kind of looking over everyone else. Last time we stayed up in the Eagle Crest section, kind of right on the, the first corner site there across from the, the Grandview Hall and the, the pool. And of course, you know, you get a really nice view up in those sites as well. Now, Tolona Ridge is definitely big rig friendly. I think they did a great job with, you know, very wide roads, angled sites. Uh, it just feels very comfortable navigating throughout some of the sites are specific and exclusive to, to motorhomes, you know, pull-in style, but I think the majority of them are, are mixed. Well, let's talk fundamentals next because you can have the most beautiful RV resort with the nicest amenities, and we'll talk about those in just a minute, but if the key fundamentals aren't right, you know, it kind of degrades the experience. So let's talk about some of that. First off, every site has a full width concrete pad. And not only that, but some of them are extremely long. I mean, some of them are 70 to 80 feet long. I think the, the spot that we're in here is at least 75 feet across there. So you got plenty of room. The concrete pads are surrounded with turf grass, flower beds, you know, vegetation, uh, very well manicured. So no dirt or mud to worry about. Then each site, it's got a real fancy hookup pedestal with, of course, your electrical, your water, and all combined. And then your, your sewer, of course, is designated separately off to the side. And this is my second time staying here. The water pressure has been a nice and solid, about 60 PSI coming out there, real steady. 
Uh, it's just got a real clean shut off there, which by the way, on these parallel sites here on Falcon Ridge, if you're wondering where the hookups are and how hard are they to reach, because you know, the road is basically where your hookups normally would be. They've got the hookups kind of on the back corner on the campsite of the sites here. And so I was able to reach them with a 25 foot water hose plus a 15 foot water hose. And then the electrical, you know, is already on the back of my rig, so that was no problem. The sewer, though, is actually right there, kind of in the uh, concrete pad, and so that was no issue reaching. Of course, they've got 50 amp power, 30 amp power, 20 amp power at each of the pedestals. And, you know, talking about fundamentals, sometimes you go to a really nice RV resort and the power, the voltage fluctuates. You know, most of us have a, an EPO shut off inside our coaches where if the voltage drops too low, it's going to cut the power to, to save all your delicate electronics. And I'll say that we have never had that happen staying at Tolona Ridge. You know, I've been at some pretty nice RV resorts where, you know, you get temperatures in the 90s during the summer and everybody's got two or three ACs running at your site and, you know, the voltage starts to fluctuate and you might notice that the power kind of cuts in and out occasionally. Well, I have not noticed that here, so it seems like they've got the power figured out and a, you know, steady, consistent supply going to each of the sites. They do have gated access with key cards, so it kind of helps keep some of the unwanted traffic out. They do have free Wi-Fi, and I gotta say, I've been impressed with the Wi-Fi both times that we've we've stayed here. You know, a lot of times you get to an RV resort and you get, uh, you know, full weekend. There's 140 sites here, and you multiply all the different devices that everyone has, and there's literally thousands of devices connecting to the campground's Wi-Fi, and it just gets bogged down and unusable. But I will say, I have noticed here at Tolono Ridge, they seem to have some kind of quality of service enabled to kind of guarantee that each campsite gets a, a certain amount of bandwidth. So that's pretty nice there. And really, you know, there's a lot of variables there and just a lot that goes on behind the scenes, but it seems like they've invested in the equipment to at least help make the, the Wi-Fi as good as it can be there. And overall, as you can see, I mean, the property, it seems to be very well kept. There's a lot of grass, a lot of flower beds and, and vegetation. and you know, even after a year of being open, it seems that they do a pristine job, you know, keeping everything maintained on the, the grounds. So when it comes to the fundamentals, I mean, I think they nailed it across the board, regardless of which section that you're staying in. Well, let's talk about the amenities because they've got a ton of them here at Tolona Ridge. And I'm gonna start on the upper level because in my opinion, it all kind of revolves around what they call the Grand View Hall up on the upper level there and it's next to the pool and uh, really it's got some of the the best views looking out into the mountains there you know it's completely open up there to all the the campers regardless of which level you're on and of course they've got special events going on there otherwise it's just a really nice place to unwind and stay cool in there they've got a, a bar inside and then next to the grandview hall is kind of an outdoor pole bar really nice space Really nice aesthetic up there. Just lots of places to sit around and, and visit and spend time with your family and friends. And then next to the Grandview Hall is the main pool and spa area. And I mean, you really gotta get in the pool to appreciate the views because when you look out, you just see mountains off in the distance. Just absolutely gorgeous. Now, last time I was here, as nice as I thought that whole pool area was, I remember thinking that it seemed just a little bit on the small side considering all the, the campsites, especially on a busy you know, uh, weekend or a holiday time. And uh, so I'm happy to tell you that they just announced last month that they're in the process of developing a second pool area, a more family friendly area uh, with a clubhouse and everything on the lower level in the Hawks Valley. And so I'm really excited about that because out behind me is is the Hawks Valley and I think uh, having a second pool down there it uh, really is going to make this resort all the more attractive especially to families so stay tuned for that but the upper level it's also got a fitness area right there behind the the pool space and you know really like I said there's just a lot of gathering space a lot of different sitting areas up there and I mean you just got great views all the way around there to the mountains. And again, all that space is, is public, common space, regardless of where your campsite is. And I'll also mention that up in the Grandview Hall, there are a, a lot of events that are planned between the Grandview Hall and the pole barn next door. You know, I know every time we've been here, they've had a lot of different events on the weekend. Sometimes it's concerts, you know, musicians, uh, especially with holidays and whatnot. Uh, then sometimes in the daytime, I've noticed there's different events for kids or adults, you know, face painting or, you know, doing some kind of craft or artwork. And so that's really something that's kind of unique about Tolona Ridge. I mean, they definitely have a lot of events planned. So depending on when you're here, you may get the opportunity to partake in, in something extra special. 
I think most of the concerts are free, but the other events for adults and kids, they may have a you know nominal charge to cover the supplies. But it really is just a nice gathering area and just spectacular views all the way around. Another new amenity that just opened up, I think in the last month or so, is an obstacle course for the, the kids. And I think this is a great addition, you know, it gives the kids something to do. I actually tried it out myself and, you know, it's not just for younger kids. I mean, there's all sorts of different challenges there. Even some adults might might find it interesting, but uh, I'm really glad to see that they added that there. And it's it's my understanding they actually did that based on guest feedback. They had a lot of guests that uh, said, hey, it'd be nice to have a, a play area for the kids. And so I think that's really neat that when a development like this listens to the guest feedback and then adds new amenities. You know, it just says a lot about the, the leadership. But the obstacle course is really a great area for the, for the kids now. Then they also have a special dog park and a dog washing facility. Now I've seen dog parks at RV resorts, but I don't know that I've actually seen a, a dog washing station. So that's kind of a unique amenity there. They also have some pavilions that are just scattered throughout the different levels. And I think most of them have different grilling stations there. They're kind of first come, first served. Of course, they have laundry facilities on the different levels, and it just looks really clean and neat there. Uh, I also discovered they actually have an ice machine on, on site, so that's kind of nice. They do have some golf carts available for rent. I think it's pretty limited. And of course, that's only if you don't want to get your exercise, you know, walking around the property. And then last, they also have pickleball courts for adults. I gather at times they do special classes on the weekends, and then nearby is a propane fill station. So yeah, the amenities, they are really nice, especially that upper level there with the, the gathering hall and the pool area. You know, it just has a really nice resort aesthetic as you, you walk around. And like I said earlier, being candid, that pool area just feels a little bit anemic, but they are gonna be developing that second pool area in the lower level. And I think that's gonna be kind of the missing puzzle piece, so to speak. All right, well, let's talk about what to do when you're staying up here at Tolona Ridge RV Resort, because let's face it, sometimes there's a really nice RV resort that's planted in the middle of nowhere and you're kind of stuck there and there's nothing to do around it. And so let's talk a little bit about that. You know, this is in Georgia. We live in Georgia, so this is kind of local to us. So even before the resort was built, we would come up to LJ for various occasions. Well, LJ is probably best known for its apples. This is the apple capital here. And so I think it would be really fun, especially if you're out of state and you've never seen that whole scene before, to plan a trip in the fall, you know, late September, going into October, come out here. There are so many things to do surrounding the whole apple season and the different festivals that time of year. So I think that would be a really fun opportunity. But even year round, most of the apple houses are open and they have different seasonal items available there. So it's just kind of fun to, to look and see what they have. Of course, Ella J is a real quaint town. And so you could easily spend a day in the downtown area there. There's a winery or two around. And then you are at the base of the Appalachian Mountains here, you know, going into the Blue Ridge Mountains. And so there's a ton of different hiking trails if you're into that. And I'll just mention one real short, easy one, uh, especially if you've got younger kids called Tumbling Waters Trail. If you look that one up, it's got, you know, a little bit of a hike there for even younger kids. That's OK, but it's got a very rewarding uh, kind of a, a river stream with a bridge running over it. Uh, so definitely recommend that one. Now, the resort itself actually has their own app. And I know when I heard that first, I thought, you know, everybody has an app nowadays. They just want you to install it on your device. But I was really surprised with what they have in their app it's extremely helpful i mean somebody has curated an entire list of you know outdoor activities nearby shopping dining of course all the apple orchard stuff that i mentioned you know wine and crafts so definitely check out their app i really think it's helpful they've kind of done all the research for you ahead of time and, and dropped it in there so i guess what i'm trying to say is i definitely think you could make this a destination kind of trip even if you're driving six seven eight hours or more from out of state you know there's a lot of things to do here at the resort itself but there's so many things in the surrounding community that I think would be a really fun trip, especially if you did it in the fall around the Apple festivals. I just think that'd be really neat for someone who's never experienced that before. Well, let me give you my final thoughts here at Tolona Ridge RV Resort. And you know, one of the questions I have a lot of times at an RV resort, is it a once and done kind of deal where you go there once and you're done? Or is it something worth coming back to several times uh, moving forward? And of course, for us, this is more of a local spot. And so it's closer. And so naturally, you know, there's a, a draw there. But you know, there's so many things to do here. And it, it really is a, a nice environment with all the, the surroundings and amenities. 
I mean, I think once they complete the second pool down in the lower level in the Hawks Valley, I think the resort, it really has the potential to become a, an epic spot for families to, to vacation and, and just relax. So definitely stay tuned because I think that additional pool is really going to help make this RV resort one of the premier you know, destinations in the, in the southeast. Now to keep up with the resort, you can of course follow them on the different social media channels. I actually recommend subscribing to their newsletter because I've noticed that they put out information there first to people and sometimes exclusive information on the newsletter that they don't share on the social media channels. Well, that is my tour and review on Tolona Ridge RV Resort. Now this is really the first time that I've attempted to do a video tour and review at an RV resort. And so definitely let me know if you got the information that you were looking for. And of course, if you'd like to see more things like this in the future, drop me a comment below. As always, thanks for watching.